just see the hair, if you, the pattern, just the pattern, yeah? Just the pattern. There, we can see that this is the central maxima and as it goes further from the central maxima, you can see the intensity of the line. Hello, my name is Aldea Ramania Fitri and I come from SMP Nipri Sato, Surabaya and this is my presentation on physics. Um, for the Young Scientist Competition 2020 and this is about from over diffraction method to determine the exponential decay factor of the underdamped harmonic oscillatory system. Some quantities in a harmonic oscillation such as the spring constant, damping ratio and exponential decay factor are crucial and helpful. It can be used to evaluate and to analyze mechanical phenomena such as resonance, damping, and mechanical stability in some application in mechanics. The established technique to measure the exponential decay is using the high compression application on the mass oscillatory system, which needs a huge force to compress the spring. Another applied technology is the use of digital camera or synchronized electric signals to analyze the motion. This study will provide the use of Fraunhofer diffraction to determine the exponential decay factor. The materials and tools we will be using for this study are two different springs, torsional balance for weighing objects, static, ruler, stopwatch to measure the period of oscillation, beaker glass, water as an absorber medium, vernier caliper to measure the laser beam position. It is 0.05 millimeters in least count for its sensitivity mass container to hold the masses, variable masses, a strand of hair for the diffraction object, U-shaped wire to hold the strand of hair, red laser diode, 635 to 850 nanometers in wavelength. Um, for the Fraunhofer diffraction method, you will need a laser and it doesn't have to be high quality or expensive. Um, you could buy any laser for 100,000 in any um, electrical shops or something like that. Um, for this moment, I'm going to use uh, this laser um, which has a wavelength of 635 to 850 nanometers. For safety caution, um, please avoid direct eye contact with the laser beam. Thank you. My work is proposing the use of optical method to evaluate the spring mass oscillatory system. By using some modification on usual spring mass system, it looks possible to evaluate some quantities in spring mass oscillatory system such as spring constant, damping ratio, and even the exponential decay factor. The main focus of my work is how to use the optical phenomena such as the Fraunhofer diffraction to determine the exponential decaying factor of spring mass oscillatory system for under damped oscillation. The main consideration here is to find the possibility to implement laser technology in front of a diffraction basis to provide a novel analytical technique in mechanical oscillatory motion. This is what we understand from spring mass oscillatory system. The period of oscillation depends on the mass and the spring constant. However, there are three different conditions such as underdamp, critical damp, and overdamp. The damping is actually determined by the value of the exponential decay factors. That is the reason why it is important to determine the exponential decay factor to evaluate the spring mass oscillatory system. My work is focusing on the under damped oscillation. Diffraction is the optical phenomena where the light propagation is changed as it goes through a narrow or sharp edge. There are two different diffractions. Fresnel diffraction and Fraunhofer diffraction. The basic concept of the Fraunhofer diffraction method is when you have the laser beam as a planar waveform which goes past the slit, it no longer becomes a planar waveform but it becomes a spherical one which creates the central maxima with the highest intensity than the rest. And as it slowly furthers from the central maxima, um, the intensity of the light um, decreases and it slowly fades. But why do we have the central maxima? The central maxima is created because of the superposition of any daughter wavefront. 
Therefore, the intensity in the central maxima is higher than the rest. In this work, we are using the Fraunhofer diffraction because we are using the laser beam, so the front wave is planar. However, we also have a Bevinet principle where the complement of the object behaves similar to the complement of free space. In a consequence, we are using a strand of hair instead of a narrow slit as a diffraction object. To implement the Fraunhofer diffraction in our spring mass system, we are going to use a strand of hair to produce the diffraction pattern. The Fraunhofer diffraction pattern appears on the screen when the hair overlaps the beam as it bounces up and down due to the oscillation. It can be used to assign the top end position of the oscillation. This top end oscillation is essential to be assigned because it is beneficial for the determination of exponential decay factor in our spring mass oscillatory system. Here you can see that's the light and here is our mass and our hair attached to uh, the object. And if we lift the object and let it oscillate, we can see on it. You can see on the screen that this is the results of my work. The first one here is the graph of linear equation from linear regression. The spring constant has been calculated from this graph. Similarly, the second one here is the graph to determine the spring constant for the second spring. These two graphs came out when the light mass and the heavier mass oscillates on the first spring in the water as the absorber medium. The dots here are the data we collected and the line here is the exponential function to fit the experimental data. The vertical axis here is the normalized amplitude of the oscillation. It is the ratio of each amplitude divided by the initial amplitude, while the second axis associates to the number of oscillations. We were varying the spring and the mass so we are able to evaluate the effect of spring constant and the mass of the exponential decay factor. The exponential decay factor here is lower than the spring mass system with the light mass. These two graphs are when the light and heavier mass oscillates on the second spring with water as the absorber medium. And again, the heavier mass shows lower exponential decay than the lighter mass. However, if we go across two different springs, the spring with larger spring constant produces a larger exponential decay constant indicating that the oscillation is longer to vanish. The systematic error in my work here was to evaluate by the simple error analysis. In conclusion, I would say that the application of the Fraunhofer diffraction to investigate the decay factor of the oscillation on the spring mass oscillatory system obtained a nice plot of the envelope functions, which very close to the exponential function with some decay factor. Fraunhofer diffraction patterns is a capable to sense the top end position. Therefore, the normalized amplitude for each oscillation oscillation is able to be determined. Corresponding to the identical spring mass oscillatory system, the heavier mass on the spring mass oscillatory system leads to lower decay factor of the oscillation, while the larger spring constant leads the opposite indicating a long oscillation to vanish. For future work, the potential application in more complex oscillatory systems are promising to be implemented. However, the more precise effort on the experimental basis needs to be carried out to improve the precision and the producible results. Statistical methods to evaluate all the obtained results are the most critical to be explored as they provide widely application to be implemented with some flexibility and accuracy. Here is the end of my presentation. Thank you for watching and listening. Have a good day.